request for a parent stuck at home. Um, how can she work with building words, uh, contractions, word families, those kinds of things with her child while she's at home? Okay, she says that she's falling a little bit behind, so she just wanted to build that base and give her that before she returns to school next year. So I just wanted to stop in and give an idea, a game, um, simply with eggs. Okay, now I'm going to use the eggs for three or four different things that you could do the same. You can buy a package of eggs if you have eggs left over from Easter. Great thing. Okay, put them to use. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is contractions. Okay, so you can put the contractions on eggs, the top, let's say it's or it is. Okay, you are going to create these contractions, couldn't and could not, let's and let us. Um, wasn't and was not, we and we have, you're going to create these eggs, okay? You're going to, you're going to break them apart and you're going to mix them up in a basket, okay? And then remember, contractions, okay, are when you're putting the words together, you're condensing those words, but they're going to match these eggs in a timely manner, so it's like a matching game. If you don't have eggs, that's perfectly fine get some sticky notes or postcards and what I would do is I would take these sticky notes and I would put them all over my wall. Nothing big. You're just going to stick them. No rhyme or reason to anything. Okay and there you go. You have a matching game. All you have to do is say now I want you to match the contractions that we talked about. Okay so we have was and was not together. We have is not and isn't together. We have was not and wasn't. Okay, there are those contraction words. Same aspect as with the eggs. If you don't have eggs, then there's always another option. You could also use um, index cards and do the same thing. You're going to put the contraction on one side and then the other on the other and have them match. Lay them flat on the table. Okay, make it your own. So you can use those for contractions. You can also use it for word families, which is one of my favorites because the kids are really starting to develop words. These are for my younger kids, of course. Now, I also use this in VIP Kid, especially whenever we're discussing a word family. Okay, so on, let me take this one off. My ending sound, like on this one, we have op. Okay, so on the other side, I am going to write those letters that create words. So I have shop, and I have slop, and I have mop, stop, okay? And every time that this student turns this egg, it's creating a new word. Now, you can do it with ENT. I have bent, tent, sent, went, lots of different words that you can make with ENT. OG, we have dog, we have fog, we have hog, lots of different, like I said, I have tons of word family eggs that I use in my classroom and on VIP Kid and in the classroom for those struggling word developers. So using those word families to build that strong sense, making it a game, it is so rewarding to see their eyes light up and they're like, ooh, dog, and they got it right. Okay, so it's that repetition, just like reading with them nightly, that helps build their stamina. Okay, compound words. Okay, again, you're taking these apart, you're mixing them, you're telling them what is a compound word, what does it do, just like you would with a contraction, and then you're letting them build these compound words. You could also do this with sticky notes, all the same. Okay, firefly, softball, popcorn, okay building the word families with eggs. Okay, like I said, super cheap, especially after Easter. They're not that expensive anyway, but if they go in clearance, you can get a lot. Okay, you can also use them for synonyms and anonyms. So big, little, small, mad, angry. Okay, synonyms, same kind of thing. You can also use them for antonyms. Okay, hot, cold, new, old. Be sad. All right, like I said, I have, I'm not kidding you when I say I have tons of eggs that I use and they really have proven to be beneficial. Okay, uh, 
it's really kind of funny. Even my daughter will get it and work with young children, grandchildren, whatever we're doing, and she will read these words with them. And it's just really rewarding to see them like, oh, you know what? I got that. Okay, last one, and this is more for kindergarten. It's matching your alphabet, capital lowercase. Being able to identify and place together the big A and the little A. Okay, the big Y and the little Y. Okay, these are great manipulatives to have in your classroom. They don't take tons of room. You can put them in a basket and just drag them out for a center rotation. Okay, so you can use these in many, many different ways. Um, I will tell you that if you use a permanent marker on these, um, a magic eraser will clean them off. A little bit of water and a little bit of scrubbing, they'll come off if you want to reuse these. I don't personally um, do that very often unless they're just getting to the point that you can't read them anymore just because they are inexpensive. I like to just make them up and I put them in a, um, a storage tote and then I just bring them out as I need to. Lastly, the thing that I, I've done with my eggs is time. Okay, you have your digital time on the top and your analog time at the bottom. And then, of course, you're going to mix up all of these eggs. And then the students have to match the digital and analog clock times, which third grade, this, this becomes more, um, no, second and third grade, they really start doing this. So just some things that you can do with Easter eggs to bring into your classroom. Um, you can do these at home if, you're, if your student is struggling with these. Like I said, it was a request of a parent that was like, I just need something for my child to do. Um, she learns better doing it hands on. So Easter eggs were something that I've always used and have found helpful to build those word families and the compound words and the contractions. You can work them with a clock. Okay, there's lots of different things that you can do. You can even do them with math. If you wanted to write, and I don't have these made up because I didn't do it, it just came to my head. You could have six plus one um, and lots of different math problems, but then over here you could have different answers. And they would have to figure out the math problem and find the correct answer. Okay, just because they're just twisting these, oops, not that one, that one's not twisting. You're just twisting these eggs so it just gives them something to sit there and fiddle with as they're doing their math or their word problems or figuring out what time it is. Okay, so this is just an example of what you can do in your classroom with the eggs. So hopefully that gives you a starting point if you're struggling with something to do with them. If you have Easter eggs laying around, um, then you can just have some fun with it. Alright guys, I hope that helps. If you found this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to my channel and tell me what's working for you or what would you like help on. Alright guys, 